Um, I'm at Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. We're up on Cape Cod. We're an oceanographic think tank. And yeah, I did have the pleasure of spending 10 days in the cabin with Dan. And uh, it was great. And Dan actually dove in the submarine. Um, we do underwater gadgets. We've got all sorts of underwater gadgets. And I want to show you some. Can you roll that? Some of them, some of them are too, bri too big to bring here, but we'll, do, uh, we'll bring some big ones next year. That's our ship, the Atlantis. It's the mothership to the submarine Elvin, and that's the Elvin pilot peeking out of the porthole. Uh, this is a typical Elvin launch uh, in the morning. Three people in that, that's the submarine Elvin, goes down about two and a half miles into the darkness of the sea, and Dan's been there. And speaking of bathroom breaks and bathrooms, when you're in this position on the ship, that's the one thing you're thinking about. Should I go to the bathroom one more time? Actually, too late. No bathrooms in the submarine. There's a bottle. There's a bottle. And over the side you go. And once you get to this point in the dive, no matter how many times you dive, everything changes for you. The sounds of the sh surface ship fade away, and you start to hear the sounds of the sea, the pinging of the sonar, and the light starts to fade out. You get this lovely color blue, and then with time, you, as you start to descend, a two-and-a-half-hour trip to the bottom goes from light blue to dark blue to pitch black, most of the time in pitch black. So Elvin's a great way. It's probably one of the most dramatic and romantic ways to explore the bottom of the sea. But with technology, new gadgets on the horizon. This is one of our best robots. It's called Remus. It really packs a punch for a very small uh, vehicle. Uh, battery operated, uh, really designed to do coastal type work, but there's new modifications of this that will actually do deep work right down to the bottom of the ocean, 20,000 feet deep. And in fact, a version of this actually flew down the aqueduct for New York City, your water supply if you live in, in Manhattan, looking for cracks in the aqueduct. So that, that was one of our most interesting projects that we've done so far. That's a sonar. That, that black line on the side of the vehicle is a sonar. And you can see it's light enough to be operated by a couple of people and then just picked up into a small boat. Uh, and as I said, for a small package, it delivers a real, solid, real lot of punch. This is a bigger vehicle. It looks like the Starship Enterprise because the people that designed it, the engineers, happen to be Trekkies. <laughs> it's also a very stable kind of a vehicle, but it's, been, it's called Abe, Autonomous Benthic Explorer. And Abe's designed to go down to 20,000 feet. You drop it off the surface ship. It goes down 20,000 feet and makes very detailed maps of that underwater world. This is Abe doing what we call mowing the lawn. It's very similar to what John and his brothers did in that incredible search for his father's sub, except this time we don't have a surface ship involved. We just have a robot we put over the side, and it does the work. And there Abe is in, this, in the mountains. You know, some of the things we're finding, I'm trying to lead up to what we're finding down there in the dark. We've only explored about 3% of that underwater world, 3%. And already we find some of the most incredible things, the world's tallest mountains, the world's largest waterfalls, underwater lakes, rivers. And a lot of that you can go, if you go over to the house, the Admiralty House, the mansion over there, you'll see a lot of that video. These are underwater mountains in the Atlantic Ocean. And we're not only doing the geology, the story of the Earth and how the Earth has evolved in climate change, but we're also doing quite a bit of archaeology. And that's a robot we've got called Seabed. And Seabed's been working mostly off the coast of... Uh, of Greece. In fact, Bill Lang, who's developed our cameras this summer, Billy, I don't know where you are here, but you'll see him over in the house, is leaving tomorrow for Greece to continue some of these underwater archaeologic programs. I'll stop it at that. So a lot of new gadgets, a lot of new discoveries, but we only found about 3%. So the next 10 years will be pretty interesting for us. Thanks. David, thank you. Thank you very much. Is this my cooking?